the service is a collection of staff, staff working in support services, staff working on the front line, staff working in the control room, uh, staff in specialist roles. We wanted to have some sort of peer-to-peer -peer, um, recognition process, so where we could recognise each other for the work that we do. Some of which is outstanding and some of which is just really unique. And so that's not just operational staff, that's all the support services and admin staff that are a valuable contribution and we wanted to make sure that those people were recognised in the VIP awards. I think Chanda deserves uh, recognition because she has gone above and beyond um, really the call of duty. She's um, demonstrated that by um, really making um, exceptional effort to, uh, to support me through what's been a very difficult time. I've attended a number of jobs that um, I found particularly difficult. Chanda happened to um, attend one of those jobs also and she gave me some, uh, some fantastic support and feedback. If I hadn't had the reassurance and the support from Chanda, I don't think that I would have performed anywhere near um, as well as I did. I think she's definitely one of the kind of people that I would like to be more like myself. On Christmas Day, her and various members of her family come in to prepare Christmas breakfast for the crews that are coming off their Christmas Eve night shift. It kind of makes me feel overwhelmed, if I'm honest. Um, it's really, really nice um, to have been nominated, and I actually felt I'd won even by being nominated. go down to Brighton Pier New Year's Eve as a family. We got to the slot machines and um, someone turned the light out on me. And I just went down like a sack of potatoes. I was on holiday with my husband and my children and I heard a loud bang and I turned around and there was a man slumped against a machine. And as I looked down, I could tell instantly that Brian was about to stop breathing. I managed to get a pulse back on Brian after a couple of minutes of CPR. Had it not been for Mel, I wouldn't be sitting here. Sorry. I remember walking over to Richard and giving him a cuddle and saying, I really hope that Brian's gonna be okay, but never really knowing whether he would survive or not. And then Brian's nephew, Mark House, is a team leader at St Helier and he contacted me and he told me that Brian had survived and he'd walked out of hospital and if I hadn't have gotten to his chest when I did that Brian would be dead. God in angel this one. Yeah. It's a big thank you from the rest of the family though yeah. because we couldn't live without Grandad at all. That was a lucky day wasn't it? It was, it was. Glad you was there. <laughs> Made some good friends.
I've been with the Trust now for 12 years um, and I still enjoy coming into work. I spend a lot of time with these people, you know, where they're almost like an extended family. We spend more time with them than we do with our, of our own families. It's quite special to be recognised. It's, it's not something that I've gone out my way for. It's, it's you know, but it is definitely very nice. works as a motorcycle paramedic going out treating patients in and around London. He also makes time to go out and help the deaf community. Richard is also going to be the first deaf paramedic to ever work on London's air ambulance. Every day is completely different uh, which is why I really love my job so you don't know if you're going to be helping to uh, deliver a baby, whether you're going to arrive, you can do cardiac arrest and um, chest compressions on somebody. I go along and I'll uh, visit say uh, deaf schools and deaf groups. I go there and actually teach them how to do what I call basic uh, life support in BSL. I read an article about Richard and how he was doing the job that I wanted to do and how he was here and impaired also. A few days later we met up in a coffee shop and um, I discussed the fears that I had and he completely put my mind to rest and that's where it all began really. It was because of Richard's reassurance and that that I decided I'm going to do this. He thoroughly deserves the award, not only for the work that he does with the London Ambulance Service but also the work that he does with many deaf clubs as well, you know, and I'm sure he has changed the lives of plenty of people. He's definitely, definitely inspired me. Just because you have some sort of disability that shouldn't hold you back from becoming a, a, a paramedic, a nurse, a doctor, other fields within the NHS. David requires recognition because of the huge contribution he's made to patient care. He has been uh, absolutely phenomenal in the quality uh, of the advice that he's provided to me and indeed to the organisation. He has um, got involved in um, many of the major incidents that we've had in London. In um, the London bombings, he was at Russell Square uh, and indeed there's at least one individual who owes their life to David from Russell Square. Uh, if you had to distill down the professionalism of what it means to be a paramedic, you distill down what it is in David Whitmore and put it in a little bottle and, and not lose it. And from my point of view, he's been my right-hand man for all those years and I will miss him hugely. It, it is strange to, to have taken that step to, to retirement. You know, it's only been just over a week or so, but I, I genuinely, I mean it's most, most sincerely and most genuinely, I miss the LAS and I miss all my colleagues. No matter who you are, whether you're a technician, a paramedic, member of the fitter staff, admin staff, secretarial staff, whoever you are, you, we are all part of this, this big family. There always has been, always will be, place in my heart for the, for the ambulance service and in particular the long ambulance service.